For the next few moments, I want to minister to you a very important message concerning correcting errors being taught concerning the great tribulation. We think the word tribulation is a New Testament word that was maybe coined by Jesus or the apostles. However, Deuteronomy chapter 4, 30 through 31 makes this statement. I believe the scripture will be in your presence on the screen. When, and God is speaking to Israel here. When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, everybody say latter days. Amen. There's your clue that he's not just talking about a period of history. He's talking about the time of the end or the last days or the latter days. Tribulation will come to you in the latter days. But if you turn to the Lord your God and shall be obedient to his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake you, neither will he destroy you, nor forget the covenant of the fathers, which he swear unto you. There are basically two types of tribulation that are alluded to in the scripture. And there's two different words that are used. One is personal tribulation, which would be identified as severe trials, anguish, and problems that come into your life that create havoc in your personal life. That is a word that is used in the New Testament referring to tribulation. In the world, John 16, you will have tribulation. That's what that's referring to. There is, however, something known in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 21 as the great tribulation. It's actually mentioned three times. It's mentioned in Revelation 7. These are they who've come out of great tribulation. So basically the word tribulation uh, is used in the Old Testament three times. It's used 19 times in the New Testament. And the New Testament word is basically what we're more familiar with. So if I were to say from the Greek word used by the writers of the New Testament, the word tribulation, it would mean this. It would be great affliction, great pressure, extreme trouble. So you've heard ministers such as myself and others over the years talking about there's coming a time in the future known as the great tribulation. Basically the great tribulation in Daniel chapter 12 and one is called a time of trouble such as there was not since there was a nation of Israel or there ever shall be in the future history. Jesus talked about it in real strong terms to say this, except the days be shortened, there would be no flesh saved. And that means there would be no one left upon the earth, which identifies to me extreme judgments that are costing lives, cataclysmic things such as volcanic eruptions, asteroids, all these things we read about are going to take a literally remove billions of people off of the planet when this particular period of time comes. So it is a time that people are interested in because we see so many signs taking place that could indicate to us that it is something that's going to happen in the near future. Daniel 9 27 tells you it's one prophetic week, which is in Hebrew there, seven years. John in Revelation tells you it's 42 months and 42 months, and it's divided in that middle of the seven years. And in the middle of the seven is actually when the Antichrist and his armies go to Jerusalem, they take over the city of Jerusalem. And that's also alluded to in the book of Daniel. Now, the timing of the tribulation has been something of great interest for people for many, many centuries. And when we read the scripture and we talk about the timing of it, that it's going to be without a doubt at the time of the end or also a period of time which is called the last days. And the time of the end and the last days basically, according to most scholars, refers to a time frame where there will be, it could be many years, months and years combined in which there are will be many things taking place that are a part of the fulfillment of the prophecies of the prophets of the Old Testament, the prophecies of the apostles and the prophecies of Jesus concerning what you will see as the last day approaches. Now, it's, there's, there can be no question when you read Old and New Testament and you read about the great tribulation, future tribulation, there are some things that are very clear. First of all, it is a time of God's wrath. It is a time of God's judgment that is being unleashed globally around the planet because of man's iniquity and man's sins. Now, there are people who believe, and there, there, there are actually a lot of people that believe this, but there are people who believe that somehow we are now in the time of the tribulation. Now, there are some problems you have with that idea if you believe that we are now in the tribulation. Because if we are now in the tribulation, there are certain things that should have already happened to indicate 
indicate to us that we are in the tribulation, okay? First of all, when you get into the tribulation, no one has yet reported seeing the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, coming in the clouds with power and great glory. No one has yet to report the angels that the Bible tells us will gather the elect from the four winds of the heaven with the sound of these great trumpets. That's the Jewish people. So where are the angels and where are those trumpets that the entire world will hear? There is uh, there has not been, to my knowledge, any resurrection of the dead in Christ. My dad is still, his body's still up there on the hill. Mama's body's still up there on the hill. John and Lucy Babe and my grandparents are still in Rose Cemetery outside of Thomas, West Virginia. So therefore, since there's not been a resurrection of the dead in Christ, then the dead, that is what institutes the beginning of the tribulation. Hey, somebody help me here. Then, then when we get toward the end of it, the Bible said Satan's going to be bound a thousand years. There's actually a organization that has literally millions of followers that say that Satan has been bound since the early 1900s. Ladies and gentlemen, if Satan is bound since the early 1900s, I do not want to be here when he's loosed. <laughs> do you? So if, he, if, he's, if he's bound now, we're in serious trouble with what's about to happen. He has not yet been bound because we haven't got to Revelation chapter 20 yet as far as history is concerned. That's something in the future. Also, and Brian Cutshaw did a masterful job at ISO showing you this millennial temple, a 15-year study of the millennial temple. Some of you see, have seen that. It's fascinating. According to the scripture, when the Messiah comes back, King David's going to be resurrected. King David's going to be the mayor of Jerusalem. Jesus Christ will be the king. King of kings over all the earth, according to Zechariah, plus in Revelation chapter 19. And they're going to build a temple in Jerusalem. That temple starts in Ezekiel chapter 44, 45, 46, 47. And it gives you all the details of what it's going to be like. There is not even a Jewish temple in Jerusalem yet, much less a millennial temple that's built by the Messiah. So how could we be in this time frame when that's not even taking place yet? And then there's going to be a judgment of the nations at the end of the tribulation. So that happens in the Kidron Valley, which is is also called the Valley of Jehoshaphat. That's in the city of Jerusalem. Nobody's reported to me of any judgment. There's no masses being uh, judged there. There's not a multitude of the, in the Valley of Decision. So that hadn't happened yet. And what about the Antichrist? Where is he at? Everybody keeps predicting it's this person and they end up dead and they don't come back from the dead. And everybody predicts it's this person and they end up getting shot and they're dead and they don't come back from the dead. I used to know who the Antichrist was in 1979, got up in Pulaski, Virginia, told everybody and had to redo my message after they shot him in Egypt. I thought it was Anwar Sadat. That's when everybody thought it was. That's when I came to the conclusion that you don't try to pick out who the Antichrist is because the Bible said he must be revealed in his time. He must be revealed after the restrainer is removed. So it's very likely that we will not even know when we are removed as the restrainer on the earth through the Holy Spirit and the rapture takes place. We may never know who he is. He is revealed in his full identity at mid-trib time when he comes into Jerusalem. Now my point is by going through all that listing is to tell you that if we were in let's say the first 42 months, there would be some things that would have to take place. First of all, if we were in the first 42 months in Revelation uh, chapter 11, they're supposed to be, and the early fathers, by the way, said that these individuals would come at the beginning of the tribulation, the first 42 months, and uh, the two witnesses. Now, Bill says it's Moses and Elijah, and this is probably one of the few differences that Bill Cloud and I have, and I say it's Enoch and Elijah, and so because these are the two men that have never died that must die at some point. Point. And we don't argue that. Bill and I are like this. And by the way, we're getting ready to do a huge thing in January of this next, next year that I'm going to tell you about. Will you remind me in the morning, shout Bill Cloud if I don't tell you, because you're going to, you're going to want to, you're going to want to hear something about that's about to happen. Anyway, going back to this, those two witnesses are not here. If we're in the tribulation, they ought to be here somewhere. Now, of course we do have, I shouldn't say this, but we too did have two fellows show up in service one time, began to holler and scream in the service. Of course, they'll be escorted out when that happens. And one was Enoch and one was Elijah. I'm sorry I missed those fellows and didn't get to interview them on Manifest. I said that sarcastically. Yes, I did. And I've heard from Enoch and I've heard from Elijah and they're both in jail in Jessup, Georgia. And they're letting me know that they're there and about to be released. I'm telling you, people can get a little wiggy, but there is no real prophet. There is nobody calling fire down from heaven. There's nobody challenging the Antichrist because we are not there yet. Would you agree with me? We are not there yet. Okay. Now, as a matter of fact, 
Um, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of people that have different beliefs about this, about the, uh, the Antichrist and who he was and things of that nature. And one of the things that is very clear, if you go into early church history, is there was a great persecution that broke out against Christians under Nero. And it really, it really hit strong in 66 AD. And of course, Nero committed suicide later. And another emperor later came by the name of Domitian. He was just as bad as Nero. He's the one that had John arrested, put in a pot of oil. The pot of oil didn't destroy John. They took him out of the pot of oil, sent him on a ship, ship to the Isle of Patmos. There they thought he was going to die. But instead of dying, he came out with a book of Revelation. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened to John on the Isle of Patmos. But from, from about 66 A.D. to 313 A.D., which is, you can, you can add up how many years that is, there were 10 persecutions that were against Christians and Christianity all over Europe, all over the Middle East, by Roman emperors. One emperor would come, it would be terrible, he would be persecuting Christians, he'd be killing them, he'd be beheading them. Then you might get a relief from one emperor, not, not really a, an approval, but a relief, and then two, two emperors later, here would come another one. So there were 10 persecutions. So the church has seen tribulation, right? The persecutions, so they still see it in different countries, but we've not been to the great tribulation, which is a particular time frame alluded to in the Bible. Now let's get into some deep studies here. These are some mis mistakes that I believe are being made concerning the teaching of the tribulation. First of all, you have to understand the purpose of the tribulation itself to understand what it's all about. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 30 verses 6 through 7 and it says this, ask you now and see whether a man doth travail with child and wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail and all faces are turned into paleness. Alas for the great day, the day is great so there is none like it. Now that's what Daniel said in chapter 12. There's not a day like this since there was a nation or ever shall be. So remember that J uh, Daniel mentions this too. It is a time of Jacob's trouble but he shall be saved out of it. Now Jacob the man was already dead for hundreds of years when that is said. Jacob is is the original name for what became Israel. So there are times the prophets will talk about Jacob, but they're talking about not the man, but they're talking about Jacob being Israel. They'll use the word Jacob. So here, Jacob's trouble can actually translate, it shall be a time of Israel's trouble. But if the reason I think he talked about Jacob's trouble is if we go back to Genesis, Jacob's problem was that he saw this beautiful woman, he wanted to marry her, and he goes to her father, and he says, you work for me for one week, and that's what it says, one week, and that's seven years, that wasn't seven days, and I'll give her to you. He worked for seven years, and the night they went in to consummate in the tent, which was at night, he wakes up in the morning, and he's, he's with the wrong woman. That would be a nightmare to any man that thought he got the right woman. And so he says, what have you done to me? And he says this, fulfill this, this other daughter you wanted, if you will fulfill her week, I'll give her to, your, to you. That was another how many years? Talk to me. You know, seven years. So you see, seven comes up twice in Jacob's life, and that's why it's called a time of Jacob's trouble, because he had to go under extreme stress. They changed his wages ten times. He worked in the hot. He worked in the cold. This was not an easy job, and it was a time of great anguish and distress while he waited another seven years. And so when we say tribulation is seven years, Daniel 9, 27, 42 months and 42 months. Well, it is because Jacob's trouble started in Genesis for seven years. Now, Jacob will also, according to the Bible, Israel, again, let's call it Israel, that's who he's talking about here, in the 12th chapter of Revelation will go into a time of travail. And that is the image that you read when you see the woman who's giving birth to the man-child and she's travailing in birth trying to deliver. And she is at a war with the dragon. How many know the dragon is an imagery of Satan? In fact, when you, were the, when you read the word dragon in the 1611 King James Bible in Revelation 12, there is no such creature as a dragon. It's a mythological creature. But when the 1611 Bible was written, you have all these stories of St. George and the dragons that came out of this. You have uh, you know, a dragon that's supposed to be this creature that is battling uh, uh, good and evil. But the Greek word is the word for, for a serpent, a very large serpent, the Greek word for, for dragon in Revelation. 
Revelation 12 is a serpent, but a very keen-eyed serpent that is able to see things that normal people are not able to see. So here's what I'm trying to say to you. There's a time of Jacob's trouble, a time of Israel's trouble, and there is always a remnant that God reaches out to in any kind of trouble, and He preserves this 144,000 Jews from the tribulation judgment, and that's found in Revelation chapter 7. Now, Here's what I want to tell you, because we're going to go into this and we're just going to fly straight through it as, as fast as we can to get all this in. It is very clear to me when I study scripture that the tribulation, the great tribulation, not the trouble you're going through, not the trials you're experiencing, but the great tribulation is never intended for the church. You'll never find it in the Bible that it is intended for the church. Okay, let's go, let's go after, after this. It is not for the church because in the book of Revelation, the tribulation is unleashed when Jesus begins to loose those seals. Would you agree with me? So in chapter 6 with the loosing of the first seal, that's when you begin to see the, uh, the Antichrist and the activity of the tribulation begin. However, you don't see the church mentioned by the word church in the book of Revelation it disappears after, at the end of chapter 3. So the church is mentioned, seven churches are mentioned in chapter 2 and 3, but you never see it again. Now you will see the word saints mentioned, but saints can be Jews and saints can be uh, Christians as well. It's used both ways. In, in the, it's used as Jews in the Old Testament. It's used as the church often in the New Testament, but it's mingled in the book of Revelation for both. Are you still tracking? Say amen. So the tribulation is not for the church, number two, because it says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9 that it's a time of, a time of wrath is coming, fierce anger of God, and God has not appointed us to wrath. Now this is one of Paul's first letters that he ever wrote, and he mentions the coming of the Lord five times in 1 Thessalonians, and he makes it clear to the people that what's going to happen in the future, that God has not given us an appointment to go through his time of wrath. So it's not for the church. Who's it for? We'll get into that in a moment. The tribulation is not for the church because, number three, it is the time of judgment on the world's sins. And you'll read that in Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 11. Now, if I tried to bring all these scriptures up, you'd know we'd be here a long, much longer, right? So we're going to give you the reference where you can write it down or go back to the tapes or DVDs later. Tribulation is not for the church because in Revelation, I'm sorry, Isaiah 13 verse 9, it says that the sinners are destroyed out of it. In other words, it's an, it's an absolute judgment on the ungodly and the unrighteous and the sinners based on Isaiah 13 verse 9. Romans chapter 2 and 8, to show you that this is just not Old Testament prophets predicting this time of trouble, Paul talks about it in Romans chapter 2 and verse 8, and he said, those who are, have, now this is indignation toward God and wrath, God is going to pour out his indignation and wrath on those who obey not the truth. Now, as far as I know, everybody in this place is trying to do their best to obey the truth. Would you agree? Raise your hands and shout, me. Me. I'm trying to obey the truth. So if we're trying to obey the truth, we're not in that category that Paul talks about in Romans chapter 2, that are reprobate in their mind, perverted in their mind, twisted in their mind, that are following the way of Satan and darkness. Who? What are we? We are the righteous. Therefore, we are. there are sheep and there are goat and there are wheat and there is tare. So we are separate from them. So the main thing is when you look at the, the time of tribulation based on the words of the prophets, it is the judgment on the ungodly and the unrighteous in the earth. And it has nothing to do with any judgment toward the righteous people whatsoever. You won't find him judging righteous, godly, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, called people during this time, because this is a whole different time period in history. Number two, this is important. The tribulation is centered on the nation of Israel. Now, in the book of Daniel, I want you to pay careful attention to the scriptures I'm about to give you, and I want you to hear this because this is a real important point. All in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter, chapters uh, 9 talks about uh, verse 27, 70, uh, we starts out saying this, 70 years are determined for thy people. And then if you talk about this seven or 70 weeks, 70 weeks are determined for, for your people. So that's 490 years. And we're not going to get into this heavy because numbers mess me up anyway. Then, then it says that, that in the 70 weeks, 
these weeks, this is Daniel 9, are determined, set up, appointed for thy people and for the holy city, which is Jerusalem. Daniel 10, 14. I'm going to tell you, the angel said, what shall befall your people in the latter days. Daniel 12 and verse 1, there'll be a time of trouble and your people, Daniel, shall be delivered, everyone that is written in the book. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 7, for it'll happen for time, times, and a half a time, that's three and a half years, 42 months, to scatter the power of the holy people. And in every instance that you find about that relates to the tribulation, uh, the, the, judge, the, the time of trouble and the, and the time of the end, if it's in the book of Daniel, Daniel, and it's talking about the end time tribulation. Let me tell you something. Not once do you see the church. Not once do you see the godly. You only see what? The nation of Israel, the Hebrew people, and the city of Jerusalem. And that's why, oh my goodness, that in the book of Revelation, look how many times that Daniel talks about, or he alludes to, the nation of Israel and the city of Jerusalem. Okay, Revelation chapter 7, there are 12 tribes sealed with the seal of God. Tribes of Israel, by the way. Revelation 11, he is told to measure the temple of God in the city of Jerusalem. There are two witnesses in Jerusalem. Revelation 12, there's a woman clothed with the sun, and she represents Israel, and she brings forth the Messiah. Revelation chapter 13, the Antichrist and the false prophet are in the city of Jerusalem at that time, and that's where the image of the beast is made, and the worship of the beast takes place. And then in Daniel chapter 11, and verse 45, when you look at this, it says, the Antichrist sets the tabernacle of his palace between the two seas in the glorious holy mountain. The two seas are the Dead Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. The holy mountain is in Jerusalem. It sits between the Dead Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. And so all of this refers back to the Jewish people in the city of Jerusalem. Revelation chapter 14, 144,000 Jews sealed with the seal of God appearing on Mount Zion. Revelation chapter 19, Jesus comes back to set up his kingdom in the city of Jerusalem. How many are seeing a picture that this time frame is is not about the church. This time frame is about Israel because Paul said, all Israel shall be saved. And this is where it's going to begin. Come on, give him a hand. I'm just getting started. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. <laughs>
P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. Order these messages today and uplift your spiritual life and help Manifest with Perry Stone continue to reach the world. You know, our office at Voice of Evangelism receives emails and calls practically every day asking us, is this the beginning of the Great Tribulation? How does this fit into the prophetic scriptures? And we're talking about everything in the Middle East and even outside the United States and the different wars and battles that are taking place. And uh, I, the, the message that I preach, you saw an excerpt of it, but this message I preach that deals with correcting errors about the tribulation being taught <clears throat> will absolutely, by the time you listen to about the 70 minutes of this message, it will correct the errors that you're hearing errors, E R R O, error, error, not arrows, errors that you're hearing about the tribulation that are being taught out there on the internet, out there on social media. And <clears throat> we'll show you what the tribulation is actually about. There is so much misconception about this time frame, which is coming in the future. So it is, in, it is part of the set of eight messages from the main event CD, DVD, flash drive. <clears throat> Go online or call our office or the 800 toll-free number and get these while they're available. We will have an, an, another excerpt coming up next week on uh, the missing link of Christ's returns, the prophetic missing link, so don't miss that as well. We are just, uh, when we come into the, the December and January, I take time to tape videos, DVDs, write books, and we have a major prophetic book that's coming out very, very soon. And we haven't announced the title yet. You will see it on Manifest. We're going to make a book offer, nothing else with it, just the book. And I am imploring you, when you see this come out, you need to get this because this is the most important prophetic book I have written of where we're actually going, not only around the world, but here in the United States. And uh, it's just filled with, filled with information. So be looking for that. But also, <clears throat> Bill Cloud and I are doing the special event January the 25th and 26th, the, thir all, the Thursday night, Friday night. We want you to get involved with that. <clears throat> Go to perrystone.org to, to get the information on how you can register and you get the passcode to watch it, etc. And it will be things that him and I would never share. It's called wisdom. It's wisdom. When you go around the world into every nation of the world, you know, Americans are like, yeah, tell it like it is, expose everything. Well, that's fine in America, but it is not fine when you start going outside this country because you put Christians in jeopardy in these countries and TV stations in jeopardy in these countries. And I'm not going to do that. So that's why we do it through our own media, through our own servers, etc. And so you need to know that. I want you to start planning for the month of April. It's going to be very important. The first weekend of April will be Warrior Fest. You'll see some clips of Warrior Fest here. This is our big youth event. Uh, registration will open very soon for that. And also, I want you to mark your calendar for April 25, 26, 27, 28 for the most popular event that there is maybe in the United States right now, and that is our International Prophetic Summit. And <clears throat> again, registration is not open, but mark your calendar. And we're giving you the date so if you can go ahead and get your hotel rooms ahead of time in the area. And we've got some great speakers coming for that. Everybody that was last year is coming back. Uh, Jimmy Evans was not able to come, but we have another brother coming who is, uh, he is the master at trans, uh, transhumanism, making people robots, okay? My time is up. I'll see you next week.